Welcome to my backyard. Now I know right now in central Canada, the lawn care season is long gone. The snow has arrived and arrived in force. More snow is on the way. The deep cold is here. Doesn't mean we can't talk about some important topics. Now when I was growing up, my dad taught me how to safely use a lawnmower and to make sure I could cut the grass. Though as any average teenager given a chore, was kind of lazy about getting it done. Never really paid much attention to the life cycle of grass and the lawn. Our family was always pretty into gardening and we always had vegetable gardens and flower gardens, but I'd never really equated what I knew about taking care of those plants to taking care of grass. When I started looking into other YouTube channels that had some tips and tricks for making your yard nicer, that is when I discovered a video from Budget Lawns. That was the first video that I had seen that laid down the four fundamentals you should be doing to make your lawn better than it already is. Now it's not making it perfect, just better than what it is. I'll put a link to his original video in the description. So go watch his video after this one, especially if you have a warm season Bermuda lawn. Now, most of the elements he talked about, I've heard scattered in different places from different YouTube channels, neighbors, family, friends. The thing that caught my attention, though, is that he laid it out in a clear system. So I'm not going to claim these are my ideas. All I've done is maybe do my take on it as applies to my cool season grass compared to his warm season Bermuda grass. And some of the products he talks about are not available in Canada. Now, there are basically four things you need to do to make your lawn better. First is to make sure your lawn is getting the water it needs. Now, this doesn't mean you need to dump a lake on your yard every season as this is unsustainable to the environment. The average lawn only needs an inch to an inch and a half of water to thrive. But what you want to do is deep and frequent waterings. Now you don't have to dump an inch and a half of water on your lawn all at once. Ideally you want to have about half an inch to three quarters of an inch each time you water. This allows the water enough time to soak into the soil and get deep to the roots. After that, let the surface of the soil dry for a couple of days, too dry that the soil starts to harden too much, but just enough to make the surface layer dry out. That makes the roots of the plant want to dig deeper into the soil looking for water. If you get out there and water for a few minutes each day, the roots stay near the soil as they get conditioned to the water being there frequently. By having the deep watering, the water stays longer in the soil for the roots to hunt out. This helps develop a stronger root system that is more resistant to drought. The easiest way to make sure you're getting enough water is to put a water gauge out while watering. Now you can do like myself and go buy a watering gauge. They're easily found at numerous retailers. You can find them on Amazon, lawn and garden centers, or I went to my local Canadian tire that had a basic rain gauge, more on that in a minute, and a watering gauge. If you don't want to spend money on that, there is the age old system of an empty, cleaned out tuna can. Put your sprinkler out, put your watering gauge or tuna can out in the area the sprinkler will be watering. Once gauge shows you got about half an inch to three quarters of an inch, move to the next area of the yard. Now getting back to the rain gauge, this is a useful tool. Set it up in an open area that gets full access to the rain that your lawn gets and I have mine set up right at the top of my fence. This is useful because now it, as it rains, you know how much water your lawn gets when it rains. Now, if you had season like I did this year, it was raining every three to four days for most of the summer. It is one of the top three wettest summers in history for my area. The rain is your friend. If it rains a quarter inch, well, that is free watering. Add that to your weekly watering. If you got a quarter inch, you need to water a quarter inch less that week. If you get two inches of rain over the week, well, you got to save watering this week. Just do your best to keep your lawn watered when possible. Now, if your area is under watering restrictions due to drought conditions or issues with the water system, follow the laws and regulations for your area. The second thing you need to do is feed your lawn. Water is the most important thing a plant needs to survive. But just like you need different nutrients and minerals to survive, so does your lawn. Now starting out, you don't need to get fancy. I didn't. And worry about which fertilizer is better, balancing the micronutrients, spoon feeding your lawn, mixing different chemicals and spraying your lawn. 
If you haven't put fertilizer on your lawn, just go to the store, buy a generic lawn fertilizer, follow the instructions on the bag and spread it on your lawn. Anything is better than nothing. Now there are dozens of different fertilizers on the market, slow release, fast release, synthetic, organic, granular sprays, more than can make things confusing. For myself in my region, Scott's is the most prevalent in Canada. It is usually the most cost effective and easily found product, but I'm not saying they are the best out there. Just saying they're the easiest for myself to find. This past season, that is what I was using. Mostly, at least, watch the fall 2022 update video to find out why I was mostly using Scott's products. So this past season, I used Scott's generic summer lawn fertilizer. If you follow the bag directions, one 17.6 kilogram bag can do up to around 15,000 square feet or 1,350 square meters for $50 Canadian. Now for myself, that means one bag gives me around two light applications for roughly my 8,000 square foot or 742 square meter yard. Now, if you only buy that one bag, that's fine. I'm just saying, do what you can within your budget. If you can only afford one smaller bag for $17, just do what you can. Anything is better than nothing. If you can find it on sale or another product on sale, even better. Just get some food on your lawn. For myself this coming year with my new backpack sprayer, I'm wanting to try out a new Canadian liquid fertilizer company, Grow Forge, located in Oak Bluff, Manitoba. Now I've not tried their products yet. I have no idea how it will be, but I got the new sprayer and Grow Forge offer free shipping in Canada on orders that are four liters or more. So in the coming season, I will be adding this to my lawn to try it out. Stay tuned next this coming year to see how it works for my lawn. So you've watered your lawn, you fed it. Now that watering and feeding has been working for everything in your lawn, including the weeds. Now I understand that for some people, different plants are considered weeds or not. For the purposes here, I will refer to weeds as a generic term as plants that I am not looking to have in my lawn. Not saying that they, are, they aren't part of the ecosystem or not serve a purpose somewhere. I'm just saying that I don't desire them in the middle of my lawn. So when it comes to feeding your lawn, there's just a broad range of products for herbicides as there are fertilizers. From hose end sprayers that are pre-mixed to concentrates that you mix yourself. There is selective herbicides, one that shouldn't harm your grass if used correctly, and non-selective herbicides that will kill all plants in contact, including your grass. Also, there's the most affordable option out there, your hands. Now, I know if you have a lawn that is more weeds than grass, it is a daunting task of going out and pulling them all by hand. What I can tell you is that I use a combination of techniques for my yard. I use a selective herbicide on my lawn for killing weeds in the open grass areas. And usually I will try and limit the amount of chemicals I use to areas where there are concentrations of weeds. If I'm out walking around my lawn and I see a random weed in my yard, I'll just pull the single weed by hand to limit the use of chemicals. Sometimes you might even see me in videos randomly stop and pull a weed while cutting my lawn. The single most persistent weed I have to deal with is Canadian thistle, or also known as creeping thistle or field thistle. They are tough, roots run deep, they can grow up to a meter or three feet tall with prickly spikes all over them. If you only cut off the stem above ground, the roots can then offshoot new shoots from the stem. I also have to tackle these quickly as my wife is allergic to them and breaks out in hives and bad skin rash from them, so I attack them quickly when they start coming into my yard. When thistle makes an appearance, I will go cut them down with mower or string trimmer then spray them with a selective herbicide if they are in the grass, or a non-selective herbicide such as Wipeout, Roundup, Weed Be Gone, if on the rocky areas of my yard. If I see other weeds like foxtail or crabgrass, I'll pull it by hand rather than dumping extra chemicals, plus it is more cost effective. No matter what way you take, just start attacking the weeds in your yard however you can within your budget. If you can't afford to buy herbicides, grab a pair of gloves and start pulling by hand. If you can only afford a small bottle of spray herbicide, pull the big weeds, spray the small ones before they get going and just start getting on the weeds. The more you work on it, the less weeds there will be over time and easier it becomes. 
If you have a thicker, healthier lawn, then the weeds have a harder time starting in your lawn and it gets easier to control them. Just get after them any way you can. Now this helps us segue into the last thing you need to do to get a better looking lawn. And I say this is the most important one out of everything that I have used to make my yard more attractive. Cut your grass. The most simple thing you can do that I have done to get a thicker, denser, healthier lawn is cut your grass. Now many people only cut their lawn on the weekend or when their days off are. So they cut it once a week. Now, if that is all you can do, do what you can. Anything is better than nothing. What I do is I cut my lawn every three or four days when I can. If the grass is growing strong with perfect conditions, it is closer to every three days, but I try to do it twice a week. Now with my regular job, I usually able to make time to do that. And many don't have that time during the week and that's fine. But by cutting your lawn more often, you can condition the plant to grow out rather than up. So you get a thicker lawn. I'm under no illusions that I will not go out and cut my lawn every day. If there, if that is what you want to do, then have at it. Enjoy the mow. Try to make something enjoyable to you. Just don't think of it as work that has to be done. You're out enjoying your yard, getting some fresh air, getting some light exercise. I put on my comfortable walking shoes, put in my noise canceling headphones with some high energy music and go out and enjoy being out in the yard. Take pride in your property. It is your castle and you all deserve to have a great looking yard to enjoy. Keep that lawn mowed and the weeds have to spend energy to regrow, meaning they aren't spreading as much. They stay smaller and are easier to either pull or kill with herbicide. Someone best explained the idea of keeping the weeds cut down before spraying them, that it is easier to kill a mouse than it is to kill a dragon. So keep the lawn cut, it'll be easier to kill those weeds. When it comes to the clippings from the lawn, if your lawn is long and would be piles of cut grass around, do your best to pick them up. If that means bagging them or raking them up, do what you can. Also, if you have diseased areas in your lawn, like leaf spot, then bagging your clippings are recommended. Large clumps of cut grass or leaves, for that matter, can smother the grass under it, killing it. Now, if you only cut off a small amount, I use a general rule of about an inch, then I just mulch my clippings. You'll hear people talk about the one third rule where as a guideline, you only cut off one third of the grass plant. This leaves enough of the plant to continue growing strong, but doesn't stress the plant too much, which would open it up to disease either and allows it to recover better. So when I say about an inch, that is because I cut at about two to two and a half inch height of cut where I'm only cutting about an inch. There is a benefit to mulching your clippings. Those clippings, as they break down, will return their nutrients to the soil. The University of Minnesota, University of Iowa, and Oregon State University are just a few examples of places where studies have been done to the benefits of adding the mulch clippings to your lawn. The clippings can return to the equivalent of two rounds of fertilizer to your lawn over the entire growing season. Just remember, if you want to mulch your clippings instead of bagging, you might have to mow more than once a week. Now these four things are the basics of lawn care. Some refer to them as the cultural practices of lawn care enthusiasts. Keep your lawn watered, keep it fed, attack the weeds, and keep the lawn cut. If these four things are all done, then your lawn will look better. Not look amazing, but it will look better. This is where I started in my lawn care journey. And from last year to this year to the coming years, I've had massive improvement in my lawn. Do I have the greatest lawn in the neighborhood? No. Do I care? Not really. I'm not here to compete with others. I care about being happy with my lawn, making it a place I can be proud of and making it something nice for my family and friends to spend time. So crank the music, enjoy the mow, then crack a cold one and take pride in your property. We'll see you next time. Cheers.